Okay, cool. All right. Okay, what's up, guys? So thank you for More Than Baseball reaching out to me to do this. Um, so today we're going to be tackling the main task of training adapted to the baseball athlete and more specifically adapted to the current situation we are all in with quarantine and the lockdowns. So a little bit of background about me. I have my bachelor's in exercise science and I'm about to get my master's of science in sports performance and I'm certified with the National Strength and Conditioning Association um, as a certified strength and conditioning specialist. I've been a part of three schools, strength and conditioning staffs, so two Division I's, FAU and Louisiana Tech, and one D2. Okay, so currently I seasonally work at Cressy Sports Performance in Florida. It's very baseball performance driven and I'm a strength coach and the director of player development at Louisiana Tech University. So the five main tasks of training for sport, and again, we've adapted it to baseball. So number one, athletic personality. So what does this mean? Developing the attitudes, your habits, and the education enhancement of yourself as an athlete. Two, my favorite part, conditioning and weight training. So speed, agility, strength, and power. Sport technique is where we optimize your training and conditioning to be the most efficient that it can be when you transfer it over to the sport of baseball. And four, tactical training. So situational decision-making, responding to opponents' situational decisions. For baseball and this situation, you're your own opponent. Sorry, there's like a thunderstorm. So you're your own opponent and how are you, the athlete, gonna respond to the situation going on in the world right now? And then five, mental training. So finding and utilizing your athletic autonomy. So what can you add to the tools you've already been given by your support staff or any sort of member that's been a part of your athletic journey and applying tactical mental ideas and tools from training to competition. All right, so unfortunately, what's the reality of the situation that we're all in? So athletes, you, in the correct environment are motivated and structured training helps promote that motivation. Neither of these things are currently available, so Remember these couple things when you feel like you're just going through the motions. So without motivation, it's really just exercise. It's not training. It's not improving your performance. It's not improving what you bring to the field. Unmotivated training can lead to unpredictable results as well. So then ask yourself, why are you training? Why are you eating a balanced diet? Why are you getting your eight hours of sleep? So number one, developing your athletic personality. So first you gotta understand the self versus self-esteem in the athletic population. So self is your mix of your life variables that made you the athlete you are today. And then self-esteem is your personal evaluation of your worth as an athlete. So with that being said, a take home message and how to improve that is learn to embrace yourself and work on the aspects of life that fuel your self-esteem. So don't forget that self-esteem in the athletic sense encompasses the following. So truly believing in your athletic potential, attaining a high level of fitness and making good decisions and then applying mental skills and being resilient in your athletic potential. So my favorite part, training and conditioning. How should you guys be training right now? So I know it's a weird situation. Should you be training in season maintenance? Go back to that off season grind. Um, I would more treat this time as a mix between how you would train in the off season with a mix of preseason. So kind of hitting those spots a little bit right before you entered spring training. So a good suggested layout for this time to like guide people who just need a little bit more. Uh, Monday and Friday, lower body. Tuesday, Saturday, hit upper body. Wednesday, a conditioning session. Thursday, active recovery. And then Sunday, a light conditioning and uh, active recovery. 
Okay, so training during quarantine. So especially during this time right now, I know a lot of people still don't have access to a gym. Variation equals key, so don't get bored with your training. Some key exercise variations, you can start with your equipment. So you can use backpacks, dumbbells, water jugs, use your significant other, use a brother, a sister, use your dog. For rows, don't forget you can switch it up by using single arm rows, double arm, head and chest supported, rotational rows. Squats, you can go goblet, arms overhead, single leg, or with a tempo. And then pressing, you can go single arm off of a stability ball, yoga push-ups, push-ups with an inchworm. I can go on and on about the variations of push-ups, but again, don't forget to switch things up. I know it's easy to like, I know it's easy to get in a, into a routine with the quarantine and everything going on, but just know that there's a lot of different variations. So don't get lazy with your accessory work either. So remember to keep hitting on those small things like rotator cuff strengthening, ankle stability, your hip mobility. And then another small thing, keep your training and conditioning in separate sessions. So conditioning right after lifting can hinder the process that you make in your gains, whether it be your strength gains, power gains, any sort of progress you make with your training. And then conditioning. So some qualities to hit and really emphasize for your conditioning, always include multiple planes of movement. So what does this mean? Side starts, half kneeling side starts, 180 turns to sprint, and use some compromised positions like push-up starts or supine rollovers to sprint. Focus on a positive shin angle. You can accomplish this by doing push-up starts or uphill sprints. And then keep it simple. So follow these themes when you're doing your conditioning. Go from simple to complex sprints. So two-point starts to rollover starts slow to fast, and then supportive to more stress application. So you can add more stress by bringing in those sleds or different types of bands. So now getting into speed, so conditioning and speed. For baseball, speed encompasses three things essentially. So acceleration, top speed, mostly for those outfielders and deceleration. So you just want to break all these individual tools down and then work on them by themselves. Then start working on your overall speed once you've mastered all three things. So how do you increase speed? Increase your stride frequency, so the number of steps you're taking, and increase the distance between your steps or your stride length. And then also when you're talking about in terms of speed, don't forget that plyos also add a ton to your speed development. So include bounds or jumps. So like lateral jumps, broad jumps, work on your ankle stiffness and your stability. Box jumps are something that I've seen everybody is kind of sticking to in terms of plyometrics with everything going on and a limited um, access to different things. So box jumps, just how do you stress your body appropriately in terms of box jumps for plyometrics? So light stress, land on top of the box super softly. Medium stress, just use a higher box. And then heavy stress, a depth drop off the box where you absorb the landing upon your impact. And then moving on to the next thing, so sport technique. I'll leave this tool up to you guys. So weighted balls, throwing, hitting, fielding. Something additional that you can add to this tool also so don't forget to also hit on cognitive perceptual training of your eyes and your brain to help with depth perception and reaction. So an example of some of these drills, there's a ton on YouTube, but a picture I included of the ring on the string pursuit and a toss around with a tennis ball also helps. And for tactical training, so again, in this situation and with baseball, you're going to use yourself as the opponent. So this is pretty basic, but again, it's an essential part of who you are as an athlete. Force yourself to keep a basic routine or a basic structure, and then keep that mindset that you had going into spring training. 
Stay consistent with your little things. So recovery, sleep, your training schedule, so that it's not extremely difficult to readjust one things, once things event, eventually do get better and once everything starts picking back up. And then five, last but not least, mental training. So use this time to become more self-sufficient as an athlete while still using the advice of your coaches and your support staff. So take this time to figure out as an athlete what you can learn about the process that it takes to become well-rounded athletically. So basic nutrition, training, conditioning, mental health, and then avoid staleness. So a state of overtraining where you peak from keeping the same exact training regimen. Treat staleness and signs of burnout with things like relaxation methods, so a massage, sauna. Literal visualizations of your success can go a long way. Imagery can cause an emotional and a physical response. They're not just daydreams. Minimizing your non-training stressors and using good mental management strategies like watching movies and replacing negative thoughts immediately. Something additional to keep in mind during this whole situation, recovery and your sleep is something that is super overlooked. So recovery has two types, passive, where you expose your body to a stimulus that helps recovery. So massage, sauna, Normatec boots, active, when you're usually doing something to help up, speed up that recovery process. So a light jog, don't go run a marathon, but a light jog, going in the pool, stretching, foam rolling, and sleep helps conserve energy, speed recovery, helps your memory storage, and helps maintain your immune system. So also limit your quarantine naps. I know it's super easy just to go take a nap because there's nothing else to do, but if you already got those eight hours of sleep, six six to 20 minute power naps only if you need them because if you really truly do need them, they will aid your performance. And then bottom line, what can help with your recovery from the stress that you're putting your body under when you're training? So stretching, hydrating, nutrition, sleep, massage, compression clothes, heat application, and swimming. All right, so. That's it. If you guys want to ask me any additional questions after um, this session is over, there's my Instagram handle and you can shoot me an email as well. Uh, I'm going to mute folks. Uh, if people have any questions, fire away. We got some hip hop. That's good. Love that. Cool. Well, um, awesome. Thank you, everybody, for jumping on. Um, I guess I'll ask a couple of questions just from the baseball side. Um, so, in terms of like pitcher specific stuff, is there anything that you would say? Like, obviously, the rotator cuff and sort of the basic um accessory lifts quote unquote but is there anything specific that like should pitchers be focusing more on speed on uh, in terms of the conditioning like what is your suggestion for pitchers in terms of adjusting the workout program for them okay yeah of course so that's a little different now that we're talking about that so pitchers i think should focus on acceleration and reaction time when they're doing conditioning and things like that because obviously we're not hitting that maximum velocity that the outfielder would and of course no base running so I think when they're doing conditioning reaction is more important so like a ball getting hit back at you or going to cover first so incorporating sprints that have like a reactive component so maybe having somebody clap and you run on the clap or things like that so definitely more of a reaction component as opposed to uh, position players. Um, and then I guess in terms of some of the variations you talked about, you know, there's push-up variations and things like that. You want to walk us through a few variations on some simple exercises. Maybe it's, you know, a, a single leg variation for a squat or it's a, 
you know, a push-up variation or something like that? Of course. So let me go back to that slide real quick. Okay. So I could literally drone on and on about the push-up variations, but just remember that push-ups in general are super important for baseball athletes just to get like that full extension, like getting the scapular uh, bone all the way around, especially when you're throwing because everybody has a little bit of throwing um, in what they're doing. So something like this, I put like a yoga push-up just helps um, stretch out those hamstrings as well. So instead of just like a normal push-up, you're adding a hamstring to it. Something like a push-up with an inchworm also getting a little bit of core in there. A push-up with Spider-Man. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but just like doing a push-up with the Spider-Man helps with hip mobility too. So adding the extra layers onto those push-ups kind of work on the different things that you should also be hitting. So different kinds of push-ups not only make it more challenging, but also helps hit different things so that you can save time in your workout. Awesome. Um, I guess, you know, that, that should, I, I get the last question should be, I guess, where can people find exercises? Where can people like, can we go Google stuff on YouTube? Can we just like search stuff online? What's the best resource that you sort of know of for finding exercises and, and sort of thinking through new stuff on uh, strength and conditioning, following the stuff that you've recommended today? Yeah, for sure. There's a ton of exercises. If you literally just Google squat variations or different kinds of squat I'm sure a million things will come up keep in mind that different people have different nomenclature for exercises so if you click on an exercise and it looks the same as something you've been doing but a different name just keep scrolling and keep looking through another easy way to find variations is kind of like focus on what you want to do so let's say if I've been doing two-legged squats my whole life. I know I want to do a single leg squat. I can just Google single leg squat variations and you just tap into a whole new resource of different kinds of exercise. Great. Um, well, uh, that's all the questions I have. If anybody else has any questions, uh, they can send them through chat. They can, you know, unmute themselves and ask now. Um, we'll just give a couple minutes for that. And then um, we have another session in Spanish at 7 p.m. Eastern time any of you all want to join as well. Cool. Well, uh, thanks everybody for hopping on. Um, if anybody's interested in joining the session at seven, you're welcome to. It's going to be the same content, but um, if you want to learn Spanish or you want to work on your, you know, your language. Um, but thanks all for joining. In because sorry I look really I'm not showing my face but I'm tuning in because I um, just graduated with an exercise and sports science degree and Alexa is my inspiration um, but I just wanted to know kind of like what your experience is in this field and like how hard it is or how hard it's been for you because I kind of want to do some similar um, I'd rather work with football but um, everybody's told me like, oh, girls can't do that, blah, blah, blah. So I just kind of want to know like a little feedback on your experience and what that's been like for you. Okay, for sure. So this is a good, a good multi-layered question. Okay. So obviously it's been a journey. So when I first started in this field, like strength and conditioning, I also started in football too. And I was kind of, instead of dipping my feet into the water, I kind of just jumped in the deep end. So that was a little bit different. But working with football before I specialized in baseball kind of helped me realize that it doesn't really matter if you're a girl or a guy, as long as you prove that you're a good coach in general, that you care about like the well-being and the performance of your athletes that really the athletes shouldn't care. So it's just like a fine line of not caring if you're a guy or a girl, just proving yourself as a coach in general, because once you prove that, it kind of shines through that you're like a standout coach instead of like the gender you are, if that makes sense. Like I've been in situations where 
I have been picked over male counterparts, not because not being favored that I'm a woman, more like being favored because I have the experience and because I'm a good coach, if that helps. Yeah, that does. And then um, also, I just wanted to know, like, what is our, well, I struggle with putting programs together. So if you could give me some advice on like um, program design, if that would, you know, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> if you could help for me. sure. Yeah, for sure. So obviously there's a lot of factors that go into program design. So um, really I learned program design more from my experience, my internships, all the different places I've been. Every coach or every sport or every school has their way of doing programming. And I've kind of taken all those things into account of how I program and kind of like found my niche. So with program design, I can't just say, just do this because for different sports, it's different. Are they in season, out of season? There's really like a lot of variables. But for me specifically, talking about baseball, since this is more baseball oriented, I found that it's easier to do like a block system. So um, A, B, C, D block, uh, pair things together. And then if you wanna give them a finisher and then conditioning, you keep it simple so that they can still be like autosufficient as an athlete and they don't need to rely on a strength coach for them to do everything. So it's kind of like a happy medium of finding everything. But I have found that with all the sports that I've worked with, athletes kind of stay more engaged with the block system going all the way up from high school or like not even high school, like middle school to collegiate. I feel like block systems help more to keep um, athletes more engaged and still keep like that autonomy and not have to rely on the strength coaches during their training. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. So of course. those are my questions. <laughs> okay, bye. See you later. Thanks for hopping on, Tori. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm, I loved, I love Alexa.